Tobacco Control, Wikipedia Article Audio Tobacco control is a field of international public health science, policy, and practice dedicated to addressing tobacco use and thereby reducing the morbidity and mortality it causes. Tobacco control is a priority area for the World Health Organization, through the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. To a tobacco control movement may have either positive or negative connotations, both briefly covered here. The tobacco control field comprises the activity of disparate health, policy and legal research and reform advocacy bodies across the world. These took time to coalesce into a sufficiently organized coalition to advance such measures as the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control and the first article of the first edition of the Tobacco Control Journal suggested that developing as a diffusely organized movement was indeed necessary in order to bring about effective action to address the health effects of tobacco use. Connotations Positive The tobacco control movement has also been referred to as an anti-smoking movement by some who disagree with the movement as documented in internal tobacco industry memoranda. The first attempts to respond to the health consequences to tobacco use followed soon after the introduction of tobacco to Europe. Pope Urban VII's 13-day papal reign included the world's first known tobacco use restrictions in 1590 when he threatened to excommunicate anyone who took tobacco in the porchway of or inside a church whether it be by chewing it, smoking it with a pipe or sniffing it in powdered form through the nose. The earliest citywide European smoking restrictions were enacted in Bavaria, Kurzachsen, and certain parts of Austria in the late 17th century. In Britain, the still new habit of smoking met royal opposition in 1604, when King James I wrote a counter-blast to tobacco, describing smoking as, a custom loathsome to the eye, hateful to the nose, harmful to the brain, dangerous to the lungs, and in the black stinking fume thereof, nearest resembling the horrible Stygian smoke of the pit that is bottomless. His commentary was accompanied by a doctor of the same period, writing under the pseudonym Phil Arates, who as well as explaining tobacco's harmful effects under the system of the four humors ascribed an infernal motive to its introduction, explaining his dislike of tobacco as grounded upon eight principal reasons and arguments. Later in the 17th century, Sir Francis Bacon identified the addictive consequences of tobacco use, observing that it is growing greatly and conquers men with a certain secret pleasure so that those who have once become accustomed thereto can later hardly be restrained therefrom. Smoking was forbidden in Berlin in 1723, in Königsberg in 1742, and in Stettin in 1744. These restrictions were repealed in the revolutions of 1848. In 1930s Germany, scientific research for the first time revealed a connection between lung cancer and smoking, so the use of cigarettes and smoking was strongly discouraged by a heavy government-sponsored anti-smoking campaign. Negative After the Second World War, the German research was effectively silenced due to perceived associations with Nazism. However, the work of Richard Dahl in the UK, who again identified the causal link between smoking and lung cancer in 1952, brought this topic back to attention. Partial controls and regulatory measures eventually followed in much of the developed world, including partial advertising bans, minimum age of sale requirements, and basic health warnings on tobacco packaging. However, Smoking prevalence and associated ill health continued to rise in the developed world in the first three decades following Richard Dahl's discovery, 
with governments sometimes reluctant to curtail a habit seen as popular as a result, and increasingly organized disinformation efforts by the tobacco industry and their proxies. Realization dawned gradually that the health effects of smoking and tobacco use were susceptible only to a multi-pronged policy response which combined positive health messages with medical assistance to cease tobacco use and effective marketing restrictions, as initially indicated in a 1962 overview by the British Royal College of Physicians and the 1964 report of the U.S. Surgeon General. The concept of multi-pronged and therefore comprehensive tobacco control arose through academic advances, not-for-profit advocacy groups such as Action on Smoking and Health and Government Policy Initiatives. Progress was initially notable at a state or national level, particularly the pioneering smoke-free public places legislation introduced in New York City in 2002 and the Republic of Ireland in 2004, and the UK efforts to encapsulate the crucial elements of tobacco control activity in the 2004 six-strand approach and its local equivalent, the seven hexagons of tobacco control. This broadly organized set of health research and policy development bodies then formed the Framework Convention Alliance to negotiate and support the first international public health treaty, the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, or FCTC for short. Early History of Tobacco Control the FCTC compels signatories to advance activity on the full range of tobacco control fronts, including limiting interactions between legislators and the tobacco industry, imposing taxes upon tobacco products and carrying out demand reduction, protecting people from exposure to secondhand smoke in indoor workplaces and public places through smoking bans regulating and disclosing the contents and emissions of tobacco products, posting highly visible health warnings upon tobacco packaging, removing deceptive labeling, improving public awareness of the consequences of smoking, prohibiting all tobacco advertising, provision of cessation programs, effective countermeasures to smuggling of tobacco products, restriction of sales to minors and relevant research and information sharing among the signatories, who subsequently produced an internationally applicable and now widely recognized summary of the essential elements of tobacco control strategy, publicized as the mnemonic Power Tobacco Control Strategy. The six components are In 2003, India passed the Cigarettes and Other Tobacco Products Act, 2003 Restricted Advertisement of Tobacco Products, Banning Smoking in Public Places and Other Regulation on Trade of Tobacco Products. In 2010, Bhutan, passed the Tobacco Control Act of Bhutan 2010 to regulate tobacco and tobacco products, banning the cultivation, harvesting, production, and sale of tobacco and tobacco products in Bhutan. Origins of Modern Tobacco Control The tobacco control community is internationally organized, as is its main opponent, the tobacco industry. This allows for sharing of effective practice between developed and developing states, for instance through the World Conference on Tobacco or Health held every three years. However, some significant gaps remain, particularly the failure of the US and Switzerland to ratify the FCTC. Comprehensive Tobacco Control Now an accepted element of the public health arena tobacco control polices and activity are seen to have been effective in those administrations which have implemented them in a coordinated fashion. England, for instance, met its target to reduce its adult smoking prevalence to 21% or lower by 2010 through such an approach. Direct and indirect opposition from the tobacco industry continue 
for instance through the tobacco industry's efforts at misinformation via suborned scientists and astroturf counter-advocacy operations such as Forest. International Collaboration Tobacco Control is also the name of a journal published by BMJ Group which studies the nature and implications of tobacco use and the effect of tobacco use upon health, the economy, the environment, and society. Edited by Ruth Malone, Professor and Chair, Department of Social and Behavioral Sciences, University of California, San Francisco. It was first published in 1992. Reception Journal Notes